Now available on iTunes and every digital distribution site. Please listen to me. Back to us again. The first release from the Suburban Love Junkies in more than a decade. She might break my heart. She can't make me leave. I'm in this with today and tomorrow. And everything it takes away. And everything she brings. Welcome back to Local Report. Extreme drought this fall wreaked havoc in area yards and landscapes. Agriculture and business suffered. Wildfires destroyed homes and disrupted lives. The drought also raised the concentration of calcium and magnesium in our local water supply. Commonly known as hard water, this condition can clog pipes and faucets. It can lower the effectiveness of detergents, lead to soap scum on dishes, and poor performance from the clothes washer. Here to show us how to deal with the problem and illustrate cleaning a shower head and faucet is WLIE2 maintenance engineer Robert DeBuise. Go. All right, I'm, I'm going. Uh, hi there, I'm Robert DeBuise. I am the handyman for WLIE2, and I'm going to show you how to unclog a shower head that has been clogged as the result of a severe water hardness. Um, so the very first thing that we need to do is we need to uh, be wearing the appropriate um, safety gear and, and there we go and now I am ready to um, oh you gotta have tools uh, not this one not this one. okay yeah there um, and, and adjustable wrench um, now I'm going to step here into this shower and I am going to uh, disassemble or disconnect the uh, shower head from the, uh, the the plumbing the tap here uh, all right now we need to make sure that it is proper Oh goodness gracious! Well, all right. Um, I think I think y'all need to y'all need to get in the shower with me. Oh, oh, all right. We have a live report on a developing story. We will resume the regular broadcast if time permits. Robert Dubois is live at Metalon Park. Robert, you have new information. Yes, Robert, that is correct. I'm here at Metalon Park at the scene of what appears to be a massive cover-up. Uh, all signs of subterranean work are, have been completely eliminated. Um, there is still a little bit left, but it looks like they have just covered it up in, in turf. So, there's no trace of L. Ron Hubbard's influence? Uh, no, um, there is no sign of Scientology. In fact, they've actually gone as far as to uh, place a diversion here, um, a uh, a sign that says Metal on Park. Metal on Park looks like it may someday be open to the public. So yes, it, the, the cover up is complete. We'll, we will have nothing at all to report here, I'm, I'm afraid to say. This story may be done before it's even really begun. The sidewalks are poured? That is correct. Erosion measures implemented? Yes. Due to time constraints, we're going to post the rest of the home maintenance story on our website. Robert DeBuis now shares with us his family trip to the Patchwork Farms nature area. I've got the WLIE2 news vehicle gassed up, loaded up, ready to go. The kids are almost ready. We're going to the park. We're going to take you with us. We're going to go to the Patchwork Farms Nature Park. We would go to Medellon Park, but as the signs indicate, still after three years, it's not open to the public. So let's see what we can find at this place over at Patchwork Farms. Eight acres, it sounds like loads of fun. Come on, let's go. All righty then, so is everybody ready to go see the uh, Patchwork Farms uh, Nature Park? Okay, so look over here to the right. Where's you the see parking lot? The, um, there's, okay, there's parking up here. Um, all right, guys, we're here. Um, I don't think they'll mind us parking here. I mean, it's, it's 
houses for future residents. Okay, so we're not allowed to park here. Um, it's private property and they don't want us here with a camera. All right, y'all, we are coming up to the other side of the nature park. Yeah, it looks like some folks are playing basketball over there. Um, uh, there's no place to park over here either. Let's see if we can find where the, the, we can try to go over there where that church is where there's people playing basketball. We were unable to park at the Vestavia Reserve, so we traveled around the other side of the Patrick Farms Nature Park looking for parking and came up once again empty-handed. Fortunately, we stumbled across the Altadena Valley Presbyterian Church's uh, public park. They uh, have a nice green space, including parking, and we're going to take advantage of it. Hopefully, I can convince my family to still go and explore the uh, eight-acre Patrick Farms Nature Park, um, but I've got to admit that uh, I'm pretty impressed with what we uh, have here that, uh, you know, the taxpayers didn't have to fund. After scaling an earthen mound inexplicably placed at the western entrance, we were treated to scenes of litter, pollution, unmaintained silt fences, construction debris, I'm not sure what that is, and a friendly golden doodle. Well, so our trip to Patrick Farms didn't exactly turn out as expected. There wasn't any place for us to park when we finally did make it there. Um, well, let's just say it this way. Uh, Daniel Corp and the city of Vestavia Hills provided me an excellent opportunity to teach my children about being good stewards of the environment. Um, there will be more opportunities like this, um, and perhaps we'll even have some good opportunities to, you know, see nature where it's uh, being taken care of. Um, I'm going to unload the van, and until next time, we'll see you later. What a wonderful story. I'm Robert DeBuise, covering for Robert DeBuise while he is on a vacation from reality. That's all for this edition of Local Report. Until next time, be what you are.